used in a sentence? Naeem's Solomonic solution to a workplace disagreement earned him a reputation as a peacemaker. What's the origin? This word is from a Hebrew name. Solomonic. S O L. E M O N I C. Solomonic. Solomonic is spelled S O L O M O N I C. Priskin. Priskin. Uh, can you repronounce the word? Priskin. Priskin. Uh, can I have the definition? Priskin is an adjective dealing with or existing in ancient times. Priskin. Can I have the language of origin? The first part of this word is from an originally Latin word, and the second part is an English combining form. Okay, uh, can you repronounce the word? Priskin. Priskin. Are there any alternate pronunciations? There are not. Priskin. P R I S C A N. Priskin? That is correct. <laughs> Imperate. Imperate? Can you repeat the word? Imperate. Imperate. I M P E R A T E. Imperate. That is correct. Raynine. Raynine? Raynine. May I have the definition? Renine is an adjective of or relating to frogs. Renine. May I have the language of origin? This word is from Latin. Renine. Renine. He used in the sentence. The collegiate cheer was derived from a Greek playwright's imitation of Renine calls. Renine. May I have the part of speech? It's an adjective. Renine. Raynine, we have the definition again. Raynine is an adjective of or relating to frogs. Raynine. Raynine. Do you have the language of origin again? This word is from Latin. Renine. Renine. R A N I N E. Renine. That is correct. <laughs> Memorabilia. Memorabilia. M E M O R A B I L I A. Memorabilia.
That is correct. This word could be confused with a similar word. The word is purely, purely. Purely? It's an adverb. It's in, in an immature or childish manner. Purely. May I have the definition? Purely is an adverb in an immature or childish manner. Any alternate pronunciations? There's one. There's, so the first one is purely. The, the one alternate is, boy, how is that one different? Let me see here. I was afraid you were going to ask for this. Oh, is it? Oh, is that? I can't see that. Okay. <clears throat> That's right. Pure Riley. Pure Riley. Okay, let me try it again here. The, the, the main pronunciation. I remember seeing this word last week and thinking, uh-oh, when I said this one. Okay. Purely and purely. Purely. Purely, purely. Purely. P-U-R-I-L-E-L-Y. Purely. Purely is spelled P-U-E-R-I-L-E-L-Y. Big round of applause for round five. All right, let's go right to round six. Have our speller approach the microphone at the 2014 Regional Spelling Bee for King and Snohomish Counties. All right. Intro it. Intro it. Could you pronounce that again, please? Intro it. Again. Intro it. Language of origin. This word is from Latin. Definition. Intro it is a noun, a psalm, anthem, or hymn sung or played at the beginning of the communion service, especially in Anglican churches. Anglican? Sorry, sorry. Um, yeah. Could you please use it in a sentence? The choir sang an intro it as the priest prepared to offer communion. Alternate pronunciations? There's two. So we have intro it is the, is the main one. Then we have introit and introet. Could you pronounce all of them again, please? Intro it, introit, introet. Could you pronounce the word again? Intro it. Definition. Intro it is a noun, a psalm, anthem, or hymn sung or played at the beginning of the communion service, especially in Anglican churches. Pronunciations. You want all three? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Intro it, introit, introet. Could you repeat the word? Intro it. Introit. I N T R O I T, introit. That is correct. <laughs> Somnolent. Can you repeat that? Somnolent. Can I have a definition, please? Somnolent is an adjective tending to induce drowsiness or sleepiness. Somnolent. S-O-M-N. Can I start over? S-O-M-N. O-L-E-N-T, somnolent. That is correct. Consanguine. Consanguine. Uh, can you repronounce the word? 
Consanguine. Consanguine. May I have the definition? Consanguine is an adjective of the same blood, descended from the same person or the same ancestor. Consanguine. May I have the language of origin? This word is from Latin-derived French. Consanguine. Okay, consanguine. C-O-N-S-A-N-G-U-I-N-E. Consanguine. That is correct. Alanim. Alanim. Could you pronounce the word again, please? Alanim. Alanim. A L E N I M. Alanim. Alanim is spelled A L L O N Y M. Strophic. Strophic. May I have the language of origin? This word is from Greek. Strophic, may I have the definition? Strophic is an adjective relating to, containing, or consisting of a rhythmic system composed of two or more lines repeated as a unit. Strophic. Are you using the sentence? The strophic pattern of the poem helped Miriam memorize it. Strophic. May I have the part of speech? The part of speech? Yes. Adjective. Strophic? Can you pronounce the word? Strophic. Strophic. Strophic? Strophic. May I have the definition again? Strophic is an adjective relating to, containing, or consisting of a rhythmic system composed of two or more lines repeated as a unit. And this word is from Greek? This word is from Greek. Are you using the sentence once more? The strophic pattern of the poem helped Miriam memorize it. Strophic. S T R O P H I C. Strophic. That is correct. <clears throat> yes. Elastosis. May I please have the language of origin? This word is made up of two originally Greek elements. May I please have the definition? Elastosis is a noun, a condition marked by the loss of resilience of the skin in elderly people due to degeneration of the connective tissue. Can you please repeat the word? Elastosis. 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 
E L A S T O S I S, elastosis. That is correct. <laughs> Big round of applause for our round six spellers. All right, let's have our speller approach the microphone for round seven of the regional spelling bee for King and Snohomish counties for 2014. Sana buoy. Could you repeat the word, please? Sana buoy. Language of origin. The first part of this word is originally Latin, and the second part is originally Germanic and passed through French before becoming English. Definition. Sana buoy is a noun, a float equipped with a hydrophone for detecting underwater sounds and an automatic radio transmitter for transmitting the sounds and developed as a submarine detector. Alternate pronunciations? There are not. Could you repeat the word again? Sana buoy. Definition? Sana buoy is a noun, a float equipped with a hydrophone for detecting underwater sounds and an automatic radio transmitter for transmitting the sounds and developed as a submarine detector. Could you repeat the word again, please? Sana buoy. Again? Sana buoy. Again. Sana buoy. Could you please use it in a sentence? The airman dropped a sauna buoy over the submarine's last known location. Could you repeat the sentence again, please? The airman dropped a sauna buoy over the submarine's last known location. Could you repeat the word again, please? Sana buoy. Language of origin. The first part of this word is originally Latin, and the second part is originally Germanic and passed through French before becoming English. So second part was from German, and then French, and then English. The first part of this word is originally Latin, and the second part is originally Germanic, and passed through French before becoming English. Could you repeat the word, please? Sana buoy. Sauna buoy. Could you repeat the word again, please? Sauna buoy. Louder. Sauna buoy. Sauna buoy. S O N A. Let me let me restart. S O N A. Again, sorry, let me restart. Sana buoy. S O N A B. Could you repeat the word again, please? Sana buoy. 
definition. Sauna buoy is a noun, a float equipped with a hydrophone for detecting underwater sounds and an automatic radio transmitter for transmitting the sounds and developed as a submarine detector. Sauna buoy, S O N A B Let me restart over again, sorry. S O N A B U O Y Sauna buoy. And speller number 2, if you can remain in the auditorium. We'd really appreciate it in terms of how the rounds go from now on. Can you, can you, are you able to stay? For one more round. For one more round. Stay in the stands at least for one more round, please. No, no in, the, in the audience, but just for one more round. It's just a technicality of how the, how the bees go. All right. Sauna buoy is spelled S-O-N-O-B-U-O-Y. All right. Our next speller in this round seven. Barouche. Could I have a definition, please? Barouche is a noun, a four-wheeled, shallow carriage with a driver's seat high in front, two double seats inside, one facing back and the other front, and a folding top over the back seat. Can I have a language of origin, please? This word is from a Latin word that became Italian and then German. Can you repeat the word? Barouche. Can you repeat the word? Again? Beg your, beg your pardon? Can you repeat the word again? Yeah. Barouche. Are there any alternate pronunciations? There is one. Barouche. What's the language of origin again? This word is from a Latin word that became Italian and then German. B A R O O S H. Barouche. And same thing for speller number eight. If you can remain in the audience, at least through this round, we'd appreciate it. Barouche is spelled B-A-R-O-U-C-H-E. Mephitic. Mephitic. Uh, can you repronounce the word? Mephitic. Mephitic. Uh, can I have the definition? Mephitic is an adjective. Offensive to the sense of smell, noxious, pestilential. Mephitic. Um, can I have the language of origin? This word is from Latin, which took it from oscan. From what? It's spelled O-S-C-A-N. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, actually. It's either oscan or oscan. Anybody? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> can you repronounce the word? Mephitic. Mephitic. Are, wait, did I already ask if there are any alternate pronunciations? I don't think you did, and there okay. are not. There aren't. Okay, mephitic. Can you repronounce the word? Mephitic. Mephitic. M A F F. I D I C Mephitic. <clears throat> Mephitic is spelled M E P H I T I C. And speller 37, if you can also remain here in the auditorium through the round, we appreciate it. Grandrell. Grandrell? You have a language of origin? This word is of unknown origin. Grandrel. We have the definition. Grandrel is a noun, a yarn usually having two plies of different colors. Grandrel. Grandrel. 
grand drill. Are there any alternate pronunciations? There are not. May I use it in a sentence? Sally knitted a holiday hat of red and white grand drill for her granddaughter. Grand drill. May I repeat the definition? Grand drill is a noun, a yarn usually having two plies of different colors. Grand drill. And this word is of unknown origin? Correct. May I repeat the definition again? Grandrel is a noun, a yarn usually having two plies of different colors. Grandrel. G R A N D R E L L E Grandrel? That is correct. <clears throat> this word has a homonym. The word is pikas. It's a plural noun. Any of various small mammals inhabiting rocky parts of high mountains in Asia and Western North America that are closely related to the rabbits, but have small ears, the tail rudimentary, and the hind legs relatively short. May I please have the language of origin? This word is from Tungusic, an Altaic language. Okay. Um, can you please um, use it in a sentence? Despite their resemblance to mice, Pikas are not rodents, but are actually related to hares and rabbits. Can you give me the language of origin one more time? This word is from Tungusic, an Altaic language. Can you repeat the word? Pikas. Pikas. P I C A S, pikas. Have a seat. No, stay, stay seated. Stay seated. <clears throat> so the correct spelling of pikas is P-I-K-A-S. And so just for uh, procedural here, do we give... Let's identify our spellers first of all right now. Let's identify our two remaining spellers. I should have done this earlier when we had a larger group, but let's see. Okay. All right. I'm going to name the spellers who are in this round and who are in the, were eliminated in this round. Speller number two, and I'm going to probably have a hard time pronouncing these names, of course. Speller number two is Meili Zhen. <clears throat> from, from Alderwood Middle School, eighth grade. Speller number eight is Toby Porch, Cascade Parent Partnership Program, grade five. Speller 37 is Tia Friedman Suskin from Lakeside Middle School, grade seven. Speller 46 is Ayush Nuri from Open Window School, grade six. And speller number 62 is Jasmine Pope from St. Vincent de Paul School, grade eight. So, okay. so we'll give, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, you're Mr. Nuri. Okay, we'll give Mr. Nuri the next word on the list. If he spells it correctly, he's the champion of the 2014 King of Snohomish County Regional Spelling Bee, and we'll go on to Washington, D.C. to represent us all in the nation's capital. So, all right. This word has a near homonym. The word is coolie, or coolie, I'm sorry, coolie. It's a noun. It's a thick sauce made with pureed vegetable or fruit and often used as a garnish. Coolie, we have a language of origin. This word is from a French word. C 
Cooley. May you use it in a sentence? For dessert, Kathy ordered a chocolate torte with raspberry coulis. 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 Can I have the language of origin again? This word is from a French word. May I have the part of speech? It's a noun. Cooley. Can I have the definition once more? The definition? Mm -hmm. Cooley is a noun, a thick sauce made with pureed vegetable or fruit and often used as a garnish. May I pronounce it once more? Pardon? Can, me, can you pronounce it again? Cooley. 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 C O U L E E. Cooley. So, invite everybody back up, right? Yeah, so we need the other spellers who were eliminated in that previous round to join us back on stage. That would be speller number two, speller number eight, speller number 37. Yeah, five of you. Put yourselves back in numerical order again if you can. All right. So that mini round was round eight. If we're keeping track, this will be round nine. Is that correct? For scorekeeping purposes? That was, I thought that was a special round for just him. That was, that was round eight. Okay, all right, we'll get back to it here. All right, this is the fun part of the B, if, as if the earlier parts weren't fun. <clears throat> okay. Oh, the correct spelling for coulis. That's the first time I've missed it today. Thank you very much, audience. Um, the correct spelling of coulis is C-O-U-L-I-S. <clears throat> Excuse me. A sip of water here. All right. <clears throat> All right, so this is our next round of the 2014 Regional Spelling Bee for King and Snohomish County. Let's have our speller approach the microphone. This is Meili Zhen. Zen. Zen. Alderwood Middle School, eighth grade. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, definitely. The word we're looking for is sorbifacient. It's a noun. It's a substance that produces or promotes a Could you pronounce the word again, please? Sorbifacient. Language of origin. This word is from Latin. Alternate pronunciations. There are not. Could you please use it in a For oil spills on concrete floors. Since that produces or promotes a taking up by various means, as by capillary, osmotic, solvent, or chemical action. Okay. 
definition again? I beg your pardon? Could you please repeat the definition again? Sorbifacient is a noun, a substance that produces or promotes the taking up by various means, as by capillary. you please use it in a sentence? The household tips booklet lists cat litter as an ideal sorbifacient for oil spills on concrete floors. Sorbifacient. Again. Sorbifacient. Sorbifacient. F A S O R B A F A C Okay, let me start over again. Sorbifacient. S O R B A F Again. Sorbifacient. Could you pronounce the word one, one more time? Sorbifacient. Sorbifacient. A C I E N T. Sorbifacient. <clears throat> Why don't you just stay on the stage? Sorbifacient is S O R B E F A C I E N T. Our next Can you repeat the word? Apocrypha. Can I have a definition, please? Apocrypha is a plural noun. Can you repeat the word? This word is from an originally Greek word that passed into Latin. Apocrypha. Can you repeat the definition one more time? Apocrypha is The language of origin was originally Greek, went for Latin before becoming English, right? This word is from an originally Greek word that passed into Latin. Can you repeat the word one more time? Apocrypha. Apocrypha. Oh, C R E T H A Apocrypha And that's speller number eight, Toby Porch from Cascade Parent Partnership Program. The correct spelling of Apocrypha is A P O C R Y Mastoiditis. Mastoiditis. Um, can I have the definition? Mastoiditis is a noun. Inflammation of the process of the This word is from an originally Greek word that passed into Latin. Okay, and can you repronounce the word? Mastoiditis. Mastoiditis. M. D, I, T, I, S, mastoiditis? That is correct. Oh. 
number 37 is Tia Friedman Suskin from Lakeside Middle School, grade seven. This word is made up of Greek elements. You have the definition? Cyclotron is a noun, an accelerator in which particles, protons, deuterons, or ions, are propelled by means of an alternating electric field between electrodes in a constant magnetic field. and use of the cyclotron led to the discovery of several transuranic elements. Cyclotron, you have the part of speech? It's a noun. Cyclotron. And this is made, you said this is made up of two Greek elements? This word is made up of Greek elements. Okay. May we pronounce the word? Cyclotron. Cyclotron. May I have the definition again? Cyclotron is a noun, an accelerator in which particles, as protons, deuterons, Cyclotron, C-Y-C-L-O-T-R-O-N, cyclotron? That is correct. And that was Ayush Nori, speller number 46. This is speller number 62, Jasmine Pope. Ayush is from Open Windows. Etymology. May I please have the language of origin. Both parts of this word are originally Greek. May I please have the definition. Can you please use it in a sentence? Rand's interest in polemology led him to research ancient Greek infantry tactics. Polemology. P O L Y M. You can have a seat, please. Polemology is spelled P O L E M O L O. Number 2, 8, and 62 are now free to leave the stage. Congratulations to everybody in that round, however. <laughs> All right, and in case you're just joining us, we are still live on the Seattle Channel at the 2014 Regional Spelling Bee for King and Snohomish Counties. Just about to start round 10, and we will be... All right, speller 37, this is Tia Friedman Suskind. Tia. Tia, I'm sorry. It's okay. You'd think I know how to pronounce things after all these years. Oh, it's, it's okay. fine. Uh. This word could be confused with yeah. Uh, yeah, you can continue. I have to give this just by the rules here. It's a noun, a large, gloomy, and usually ornate building, room, or structure. Mausoleum. name through Greek to Latin. Mausoleum. Can you repronounce the word? Mausoleum. Mausoleum. M A O L 
E-U-M mausoleum. Ash. So stay seated up here, of course. <clears throat> The correct spelling of mausoleum is M-A-U-S-O-L-E-U-M. All right, Ayush Nuri from Open Window School. Now, very good. The word is souffle. Souffle. Souffle, is this word from... We have the definition. Souffle is a noun, an entree or a dessert made with a white sauce, egg yolks, and stiffly whipped egg. I use it in a sentence. The meal began with a delicious appetizer of cheese souffle. Souffle. Now the part is. S O U F F L E T souffle. So, this is round 11 with these two spellers, correct? Rules judge? Okay, thank you, rules judge. Friedman Suskind, correct? Yes. Excellent. Okay. Let's give these guys a big round of applause. Come on. <clears throat> Let's see here. <clears throat> Neurotogenic. Neurotogenic. Um. of the central nervous system, usually manifested by anxiety, phobias, obsessions, or compulsions. Okay. Uh, can you repronounce the word? Origin? Both parts of this word are originally Greek. Neurotogenic. Um, are there any alternate pronunciations? There's one. Okay. So, okay. So there's neurotogenic and neurotogenic, right? Yes. Okay. Neurotogenic. E O G E N I C. Neurotogenic. That is correct. Mesalliance. Can you repeat the word? Mesalliance. Excuse me, mesalliance. Mesalliance. Are there any alternate pronunciations? We also have mesalliance, mesalliance, mesalliance. Print is very small, and I'm getting older with the spelling be here. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crouch down here and get a really good view. So we have the main one of mesalliance. 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 I'll do those again. Mesalliance, 
mesalliance, mesalliance. Do you have the language of origin? This word is from French. Do you have the definition? Is a noun. I think my wife had this. A marriage with a person of inferior social position. <laughs> You want the pronunciations again? All right. Mesalliance. 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 Can you repronounce the alternate pronunciations again? Beg your pardon? Can you do the alternate pronunciations again? Sure. Thanks. May Ness Alliance. Can you give me the last two of those again? The last two of the four? Mesalliance. Mesalliance. I A N C E. Mesalliance. Thanks. Mesalliance is spelled. M E S A L L I A N C E. All right. For King and Snohomish oh counties gosh. for 2014. <laughs> yeah. Right here live on the Seattle Channel. A Acetylene is a noun, a colorless, gaseous hydrocarbon that is explosive when compressed, but safe if, but safe if diluted with nitrogen. Acetylene. A, C, E, T, Y, L, E, N, E. Wait, Mr. Nori. Taya, Taya, come on, come over this way. Official runner-up, so please join us on stage. Can I have the families of both these great spellers join us here on the stage? I also. Uh, bank to present the uh, present the award. You were a great audience. Thank you for staying with us so long. It blows me away how great these kids are. So thank you for coming out to Town Hall today, everyone. So we'll present the award and just say, I want to say thank you to all our sponsors, Umquibank, Keys, Jones Sodas, and Town Hall Seattle for making sure this spelling bee Hopefully, we'll always have a home here. So, I'm going to hand it over to Michelle Livingston. Congratulations. Very exciting. What a spelling bee this year. This is Umqua Bank's third year of sponsoring the regional spelling bee here in Washington, and we're just so excited to.
the communities and promoting youth education is one of our focuses. So to be involved in the, in the regional spelling honor for us and I am delighted to present today to Taya to represent King and Snohomish counties at the National Spelling Bee. Everybody, thank you Seattle Channel, thank you everyone watching at home. Be sure on Memorial Day weekend, watch ESPN2 or maybe even ABC. They'll have the spelling. Good night. Go so long. Good night from Town Hall. Thank you.